the individual goals of man and woman, and I'm saying that that statement specifically into the strictest context of the the human male and the human female, me and you here on this planet right now, what is the goal? And the reason why it's great to have goals is because one, you get a chance to achieve them through focus, but also when you start getting a bit distracted, you can always go back to the goal and ask yourself, well, what is the goal? And then get yourself back on track. And balance has a lot to do with that because sometimes you can go off to the left or off to the right on the journey. It's all a part of it. But you really need to know at times, hey, where is that center again? What am I actually here to do? And that will snap you back into place so that way you can stay on point and stay in synchronicity. So what we have today is in the strictest context, what I want to explain to you is first for the females, since ladies come first, that your true role, duty, obligation to self is to actually discover the goddess within you, okay? And I'll say that again. For our females out there and that female in there, your true goal for this particular point of existence is to understand the goddess within you, okay? And for the male, his goal is to explore that, okay? And I'm going to let you see how with this goal or with this formula, if you may, or this code, you get infinite existence of scenarios and, and laughing and joy and happiness and all of the different things that you can think of. Whatever you can, can conceive in your consciousness, however you want it. If you don't forget this principle, because it works internally and it also works extern externally, you will be able to have it all if that's what you want. So again, for the female to discover the goddess. Now let's put that into the context of, of where it should be because we're also using English words. Goddess actually could mean something else. So we just wanna stringe it to exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying that there's this hidden knowledge after walking at least 50 or 60 different paths. This means actual traditions, whether it's Sikhism, whether it's Zoroastrianism, whatever it is, spending years studying this and practicing the aesthetic until you finally hit the, the top of it. What I've learned over time is that it always gets to the same thing, that there is a universal system that is happening, a universal awareness that is embedded in all traditions when they're in their pristine shape. But traditions get edited, times change, and things have a tendency to not look like they looked in the beginning. Now, think about yourself. There's this thing called aging, right? So you can imagine when the awareness of the goddess first started and what it looked like, it's probably a bit different than the awareness of the goddess and what it looks like now, simply through the effect of what we call time. And since time ages things, it has a tendency to make something that was rather beautiful begin to look like something that maybe you don't even recognize or maybe you don't even want around anymore. And this is interesting because this actually is really the context of this current paradigm of relationships, which is actually uh, becoming obsolete rapidly. But the general relationship between the male and the female here on the planetary system is suffering from at times the same thing that I just recently talked about, about how when you initially get engaged or get involved, there's this immense light. There's this excitement. This excitement is so strong, it'll turn a beer belly into an eight pack. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, guy meets a new girl, and man, he's a changed man. He's smiling, he's working, he's doing all sorts of stuff, and he's happy about it. And to be honest, I just want to crystallize that awareness for you very briefly. That, see, it doesn't matter what's going on around you, outside of you. What's happening in your internal relationships determine how you feel. And I don't care how old you are or how young you are, you've been through this experience. You could be living it up. You could have all of the money. 
you could have all of these gym shoes or whatever it is that you wanted to achieve. You could have just got that paycheck. You could have just got your new car. But if your relationship is actually in the slum, you're still in the slum. How many have had that happen? That did something big happen to them? It was a great and it was amazing, but because there was trouble at home, there was something to trouble at the, in the relationship, it, it had a lackluster, lackluster effect. Now, on the other side of things, because we love to keep it balanced, I don't care what you're going through. If you're laying next to your boo, y'all could be all snuggled up on that air mattress, you know, there on a vacant apartment room floor that you done snuck in for the night with no refrigerator and still because you're there with that person, man, everything going to be all right. <laughs> so do you see how if we don't break this back down to the simple stuff before we try to climb all the way up to the peak of the mountain, then not only are we going to have not going to have the energy to make it, we're actually going to miss some of the key components that involve just us. Tonight is about you being truly selfish. Now, all this self. But it's really about shaking yourself out of this sleep really briefly to realize what exactly is happening to you because of a phenomenon that occurs when you actually begin to go out. I even that's even synonymous with when you finally go out like, yeah, I'm going out tonight. And then you meet something on the external. And then you begin to share energy with that. And because energy management is, wow, that's a depth level stuff. That's mature stuff. Somehow in that energy mismanagement, once again, you're now staring at a relationship that the fire is going out, meaning the fire generally inside of you, even though you want to see it only in them, is starting to go out. And so tonight, 